at the grade 12s and welcome to our third video covering question three from your September theory um, CAT exam. I know it is a difficult one. So far we've looked at question one and two. This is going to be a short video um, because this just covers question three which was your true and false section. Now again I, I've, I've said this so many times in my previous videos I've indicated it as well. With the true and false section you must understand um, it's only worth five marks, right? I'm not saying don't answer. Say what? Please. <laughs> I didn't say anything like that. What I, what I do want to caution you on is the following. When something is true, it is true. End of story. When something is false, you have to say why it is false. Now, if you just said false, you won't get the mark. You have to say false and you have to substantiate that. So it's false and then why it's false. So let's look at what they're saying here. Here they tell us no mark will be awarded if only false is written. You can't get the mark. Okay, so just bear that in mind. So let's look at it. 3.1 and they even give you an example. I mean, there I'm going to show you. That's what the example looks like, people. Okay, that's what they wanted. So 3.1 says a header is text that appears within the box. Now, just stop there. Stop, 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 stop. Whoa. The reason I'm saying stop is, what is a header? Where do we find a header? We find a header at the top of a document, right? Sometimes it's like grayed out. Um, it could be the, na the, the uh, document name, you know, anything like that. But we find it on top. Now, and I want you to look at it like this so that you can understand before you answer. So we already know what a header is. Now they're telling us a header is text that appears within the bottom margin. Already there's my first red flag. Bottom margin of all pages in a document. So this is telling me that my, my header is located at the bottom of a document. Really? No. Which means it's false, right? It can't be a header. Anything that's or text that's located at the bottom is going to be what? Not a header, but a footer. All right. So footer is my answer. Then 3.2, remember now, what did I have to do? I had to say false and indicate the word that must be replaced there. So now when I, when I put that in, it should read a footer is text that appears within the bottom margin on all pages. Ding! That sounds right. 3.2, a checkbox. Now what is a checkbox? We know when we have answers, it's those boxes. And when we click inside of it, it puts like a little tick or a little cross. Um, and it allows us to choose multiple options. Bear that in mind. A checkbox allows a user to choose only one from a given set of options. Really? No, that is false. Okay, so again, we're writing down false, but we need to substantiate why. Why is it false? Does a checkbox allow us to choose um, only one of a given set of options? No. What does? Well, a radio button does that. Remember those, those uh, circles when you click in it, it, it fills that circle, but you can only choose one, right? That's our answer. So we're going to write false and we're going to put radio button down as well. 3.3, the wildcard character can be used in the find and replace feature of a word process. Now, when we talk about a wildcard, we're talking like about your, your asterisks and things like that. Um, yes, that is true. So you're just going to write true nothing else please don't write anything else just true 3.4 same story a hyperlink now what is a hyperlink it's going to be a link that takes us somewhere else so when we click on it it redirects us to another website that could be another place inside a document you know anything like that so let's carry on it is a built-in connection to another here we go related web page or website isn't that what we just said yes using uh, sorry, usually indicated as underlined text or graphics. So when you go to Google and you search for something, don't you usually see like a list of items with like that's like underlined in blue? Yes. You click on it. Sometimes it goes purple or something like that. And then it takes you to wherever you need to go. That's your hyperlink. Does that match up? Yes, it does. That is true. Don't say anything else. It's true. Last one, 3.5. An email program may reject an attachment based on the date of the file. Now, without you even knowing anything, when has an email been rejected because of the date? It can't do that. Okay, so that is already false. 
But on what basis can an email program, let's say Microsoft Outlook, let's say Gmail, on what basis will it reject an attachment? So in other words, it won't allow the attachment to come through. It blocks the attachment. Now that could be for a variety of reasons, but one of the biggest ones, the main one, is because of the size. Usually if there's a virus attached, it'll still come through, but it might not be able to open. When we're saying, or when we're talking about rejecting an attachment, it means it won't even come through to your email. You might get the email, but the attachment won't be there. That is purely based on the size. A lot of email programs have a limit on the size. I think sometimes Outlook is about four or five megs that it allows you to receive and to send. Anything bigger than that, it does not allow you to do that. Okay, and that's it for question three, grade 12s. Again, I hope you are learning with me. I hope you are seeing. We've gone through the first three. You should be empowered now. You should be on the right track, seeing and understanding how they're asking the questions um, what sort of answers they want and from year onwards we're now going on to the longer um, theory questions so the videos might be slightly longer just because i need you to get the correct understanding and the correct answers around all of these i'm going to be giving you the answers as per the memo but i'm going to be giving you my opinion as well you know i don't always agree with these things um, but i want you just to have all the information and then you can decide from there how you want to answer it but my tip my last tip when it comes to this video is in your final paper they will be expecting you to answer as per the textbook or as per the language in the memo that you will be receiving so the quicker you get used to that the better it's going to be for you all right thanks so much for joining me and i'll see you with question number four